to, to the uh, to the committee. Uh, Mr. Graywall. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you to our witnesses for coming today. Um, if you look at the data, 7% um, year-over-year increase in prices, but if you remove the GTA from the data, it's flatlined across the country, which I found very interesting. I think that we're well regulated in the housing market, and I think that the latest regulations from the federal government uh, were the right to, thing to do to control the temperature in the housing market. My concern is, are we asking the right questions? So in terms of foreign investment, and, and I don't know if you will be able to answer this question, but this is something I'm concerned with at a local level and, and on a broader macro level across the country. Does the data track if a foreign investor buys the house in cash? So if somebody from China, for instance, or anywhere in the world, to be honest, um, purchases a property in the GTA or in, anywhere in Canada uh, and pays cash for it, is that data tracked in terms of foreign home purchases? Anybody willing to take a stab at it? Or if we don't have the data, that's fine. That's all we need to know. Uh, Mr. Lawrence. So um, Simichi has done some survey work to cover uh, the extent of foreign investment in, uh, in condominiums. And uh, typically, you know, the, the percentages are very low. Um, and we don't make any distinction whether it is through cash transactions or with or without mortgages. Um, so there's that bit of information, but we don't track cash per se. So my follow-up question would be this, is that if there was a restriction on foreign countries, specifically China, uh, on taking money out of China, so restricting their citizens from removing the money, how would that impact the Canadian market? Well, I mean, the data, we don't have like, that much data. And, like, the, the data I'm going to quote is probably, you probably know it as, as well as I do. But so before these policies, were, like the taxes were implemented in, in, uh, in Vancouver, uh, I mean, about what the, about 10 percent of, of purchases were were done by by foreigners, and this has fallen. We know, like by now, this has fallen to about like four or five percent uh, in the latest data. So that's about the range we know about in terms of that 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 magnitude. And of course, if uh, I mean, we don't exactly know where the data uh, is coming from uh, internationally, but restrictions on, on movement would have an impact. It's difficult to gauge by how much, but it would impact that, that 10 percent. Um, so this is about as much as we know, I think, from, uh, from the data. Thank you. Um, uh, my last question is to uh, the Office of Superintendent, the OFSI. Um, uh, you, you monitor how lenders um, are doing their practices, how they you know, approve mortgages, how they decline people. My question is this, is that on a practical level, as Canadians walk into a bank or a mortgage lender and they apply for a mortgage and they have to prove their income, I've heard uh, of uh, stories, especially in my neck of the woods in Brampton, um, that income verification isn't as stringent as it needs to be, as in that the documents are provided and that's it, and that there's no follow-up calls, there's no practical analysis, and that fraudulent documents are having a big play in mortgage uh, and mortgages being approved and this will very much would be a regional problem but is this something that your office is looking at uh, because if I feel like there's going to be a risk to this whole thing is that you know people that are, are fraudulently getting mortgages yes they may be working on cash businesses they may have the money to meet their their short-term um, requirements, but if something in the economy changes, uh, for instance, uh, if uh, you know we have an economic slowdown or resource prices start to go down, um, those people will be the first ones to, to get up and leave. And that's not to the extent of what happened in 2008, but that's a real risk for, for the Canadian market in certain regions. Yeah, and your question is that something that we pay close attention to? Yes, absolutely. Um, the letter that I mentioned in my opening remarks um, uh, included um, comments on exactly that issue, reminding lenders that it's very important to um, be diligent about assessing a borrower's capacity to repay, and particularly where that capacity may be originating outside the country or from, from sources other than sort of a kind of a typical paycheck where you can look at a pay stub. So, um, so it's something we pay close attention to. Absolutely. 
I would further say that right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong because I haven't dealt with a transaction since I was elected, but I was a corporate lawyer before. Um, uh, when you, uh, you provide the bank with notice of assessments, they take them for what they are on the paper. And then they don't pick up the phone and call the CRA to double check that income. And, and I've heard, I've seen uh, fraudulent NOAs out there. And, and I think that that is actually a real risk uh, to banks and, uh, and how the housing market, if there is a risk to the housing market, it, this may not be a major impact, but it definitely will be an impact. So it's something that I'd suggest you, all of you to, to look into. Thank you so much.